iPhone SE versus Pixel 3a. I know I haven't done a head-to-head -head comparison in a while. In fact, I was just looking it up and it appears I haven't done one in over a year. But this matchup was so good, it was hard to resist. In the ring, we have two phones from opposite ends of the smartphone world. One is from Apple, the other from Google. Both sell for the same exact price. Both intended to disrupt the trend of rising phone costs. Both asking the same question. Do you really need a $1,000 phone? Or if a phone is well-designed, has great software and a great camera, is a $400 phone good enough? Well, these are two excellent affordable options out there. But which one should you get? This is our iPhone SE versus Pixel 3a head to head. Hi, I'm Michael Josh and you're watching Gadget Match. If you're new here, welcome. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. It doesn't take much, but it would mean a whole lot to me. Recently, we hit 500,000 subscribers and I would love it if together we could reach for that 1 million mark. Before we dive in, let's get to know our contenders. In one corner is Apple's iPhone SE. This phone was announced just last week and should start shipping the day this video goes live. It's a sequel to the first iPhone SE from 2016. It's the smallest iPhone you can buy today and the cheapest one too, coming in at $300 less than the flagship iPhone 11. In the other corner, Google's Pixel 3a, announced almost a year ago as an affordable alternative to the flagship Pixel. We're still waiting on a sequel, but there have been leaked box photos. Google announced the 3A at I.O. last year, but this year's event was canceled due to COVID-19, so there's no telling when the announcement is going to happen. In any case, a follow-up video will be in the works, so make sure you have notifications turned on so you don't miss that video. Round one, build and design. Let's be clear, these phones are two different sizes. So I'm gonna leave that point there. You decide if you want a bigger phone or a smaller phone, but that's not going to go into this head-to-head. -head. In terms of build quality and choice of materials though, the iPhone SE is the hands-down winner. Its frame is built from 7000 series aluminum and it's got a glass back made from material that's custom designed by Corning, the same company that also makes Gorilla Glass. While I love this purple-ish color and its matte finish, the Pixel 3a is made of polycarbonate plastic. And it's screened from Asahi's Dragon Trail Glass, which is a mid-range competitor to Gorilla Glass. It's a difference you can feel when you pick them up. The iPhone feels heftier and more premium. Design-wise, I appreciate how Google followed the design of this phone's big brother. Aesthetically, there's nothing that tells them apart. The iPhone SE, on the other hand, borrows the design of an older sibling. That said, I much prefer the design of the iPhone still. It's a classic and will stand the test of time. One could argue that the iPhone has a large forehead and chin, which is not very 2020, but the Pixel has them too, albeit not as large. One could also say that in exchange, you get stereo speakers with the earpiece on both the Pixel and the iPhone doubling as second speakers. Both are reasonably loud with the Pixel at a slight advantage. Okay, time to call this round. Both in terms of design and durability, our winner is the iPhone SE. Round two, display. The iPhone SE is a tiny phone. It sports a 4.7 inch LCD HD display. Meanwhile, the Pixel 3a has a larger 5.6 inch screen. It's OLED and its resolution, full HD. So if you're basing it purely on specs, the Pixel 3a is the winner of this round, except in one less talked about metric, brightness. It's hard to show in video, but the SE maxes out at 625 nits, while the 3A falls just a tiny bit over 400. It's a difference you can notice. Apart from that, in real world terms, the display tech advantage and the higher resolution doesn't really give the Pixel a leg up over the iPhone. 
For most users, the experience isn't going to be very different. Out of the box, the iPhone SE has a more color accurate display. The Pixels is warmer and tends to punch in saturation and contrast a bit more. But you can go into settings and change colors from adaptive to natural to fix that. It's a personal preference kind of thing. Both phones offer light and dark mode. The iPhone has extra features like True Tone, which matches the display's colors to ambient lighting conditions, so colors are kept consistent throughout the day, which is different from adaptive brightness on the Pixel 3a, which adjusts screen brightness, not colors, based on ambient light. The iPhone SE also has Night Shift, turned off by default. It's a very nifty feature that dials up the warmth of the display as the day nears its end. In principle, this is supposed to reduce the amount of blue light that the phone emits as you get closer to bedtime. That said, when it comes to displays, the iPhone SE has an edge software-wise. And I'd argue that this affects the experience just as much as a higher resolution screen and better display tech. So let's call this round a draw. Round three, battery and charging. Apple doesn't publish battery capacity numbers for the iPhone SE, but it's safe to assume that it's going to be similar to the 1,821 milliamp hour capacity of the iPhone 8, on which it is based, versus the 3,000 milliamp hour battery on the Pixel 3a. Based on my average use, the Pixel 3a lasts longer than the iPhone SE, with at least a little left over before the end of the day, unless I'm pushing it very hard. I definitely credit the bigger battery, but also the less powerful processor. In terms of top-ups, the Pixel 3a charges faster too, using the charger that comes in the box. With its bundled 18-watt USB-C adapter, the Pixel 3a gets from 0 to 100 in about 90 minutes, versus the slow 5-watt charger that comes with the iPhone SE, which delivers a full charge in over 2 hours. So this category is definitely one for the Pixel 3a. The only advantage of the iPhone SE is its wireless charging support. I have a Nomad wireless charging base station by my bedside and it's great to be able to just plop my phone down on it before I hit the sack. Albeit slow, a night's sleep is long enough for a full charge. That said, its lack of wireless charging aside, the Pixel 3a is still the winner of this round. Round 4. Power and Performance this is where Apple and Google have very different approaches when it comes to their budget-friendly offerings. The iPhone SE is powered by Apple's own top-of-the-line system on a chip, A13 Bionic, the same one that's on its flagship 11 and 11 Pro models. The Pixel 3a uses Qualcomm's mid-tier Snapdragon 670 processor. A13 is a 7 nanometer chip. Snapdragon 670 is a 10 nanometer chip. This makes a big difference across a wide variety of tasks, and it's evident from how long it takes the Pixel to process its images, compared to the Pixel 3, which runs Qualcomm's corresponding top-tier processor. One would argue the Pixel has more RAM than the iPhone, 4 gigabytes, and I'm just guessing here, most likely 3 gigabytes on the iPhone SE. I'm just guessing because Apple never really officially releases its RAM numbers, and I think that's a good thing because it's hard to compare based on numbers alone. Especially considering how well iOS is optimized to run on iPhone hardware. Having less RAM than its Android competitors has really never spelled that big of a difference for Apple. Unless you're like me and you always have a lot of apps open, make sure to save that Insta story before you're ready to post. Otherwise, if you switch to another memory intensive application, that Insta story might be gone when you get back to it. That said, I have to give this round to Apple. Just because I spend less on a phone shouldn't mean I should get any less of an experience. I'm not saying the Pixel 3a can't do the same things the iPhone SE can, it's just that the iPhone runs faster and has more power to plow through whatever apps I throw at it. Of course, I saved the most exciting and possibly the most important part for last, the camera shootout. And to be honest, this part is long and detailed enough to be its own 
standalone video. Let's start with the hardware, shall we? Both phones have only one rear camera. The iPhone SE has a 12 megapixel wide angle camera with an f1.8 lens, while the Pixel has a 12.2 megapixel wide angle lens, also with an aperture of f1.8. The Pixel, however, actually sports a larger 1 over 2.55 inch image sensor versus the 1 over 3 inch image sensor on the iPhone SE. Both phones have 7 megapixel selfie cameras with an aperture of f2.2. To properly judge this comparison, I took many photos, then I had my producer Chai line them up so I could judge them blindly. On a bright day when the sun is out and the sky is blue, both phones take comparable photos. Now, I don't know if it's just the iPhone's photo is on the warmer side, but the Pixel 3a's photo has a dullness to it, so you don't get a proper sense of how bright out it was that day. You see again in this example shooting up, the M train feels more alive, or this photo shooting down. The pixel shot looks almost gloomy, even if the clouds were clearing and the sun had already come out. Maybe it's smart HDR on the iPhone that handles highlights and shadows better. In this photo, for example, I preferred the intensity of contrast of the shadows and the more saturated brick building. Here's another example where the Pixel 3a's photo is flat and lacking in oomph. But look at how creamy that bokeh from both phones. Yummy. Other times though, it's almost impossible to tell. I actually prefer the Pixel shot here and on this one too. But let's stop comparing for a while to appreciate how stunning photos like these can be produced by smartphones a dollar shy of 400. <laughs> Moment over, let's go back to the camera shootout. The dullness continues as the sun begins to set. This next series was shot on my roof deck. Let's zoom in on those light bulbs, a favorite subject of mine. I love both these photos. The filament and the glass bulb itself is tack sharp. Mind you, that bulb was rocking in the wind. The bokeh is creamy too, but I love how the iPhone managed to capture more colors of the sunset. I shot this next series because I love the pinkish purples in the sky and wanted to see which phone could capture the colors best. The differences are minute, but I think the iPhone did a better job overall. Now let's talk about bokeh, one of my favorite things in photography. Now, I don't know if the differing results in these two different photos are because of software or hardware or both, because both of these phones have single cameras only. It's pretty remarkable how the background blur on the iPhone's photo has different levels depending on how far away the shrubs are from the subject. Don't get me wrong, I love the Pixel's photo too, but the background feels more like just a single blob of blur, if you get my drift. Before we move on to night shots, I was really curious about what I had referred to as a certain warmth in the iPhone's photos and wanted to find out if the phone really had a tendency to shoot towards the warmer side of the spectrum. First set to cool, and then set to the warmest they'll go. With lights set to 5600 Kelvin, the iPhone SE's photos came out warmer as usual, but I'd argue that it was more color accurate based on the color of the alchemist as well as my monkeys. We get our answer though when my studio lights were adjusted to 3200. You'll find that the Pixel shot came out warmer for a change, and it's not till you pull both iPhone shots side by side where you understand what's happening. Both photos are so similar regardless of the lighting in the room. This is a sign that the iPhone is doing a better job at white balance. Evident when you zoom in to the left-hand side of the photo at what should be the white areas. The consistency is impressive, and this test tells me that the iPhone wasn't purposely churning out warmer photos. It was just better at accurately reproducing colors in a scene. That said, by this time, the sun had completely set, and it's time for some low-light indoor photos. Starting with this shot, taken from a dim corner of my bookshelf. Without anything to compare it to, the iPhone SE's photo is fine. A bit noisy if you're nitpicky. The Pixel 3a's photo, however, is better. That pinkish hue, though, is from a pink bulb I had on. With night sight on the Pixel, it's an even better shot. Again, the iPhone's white balance aggressively corrected the pinkish light. I'll admit, at night, when you're actually trying to capture mood, 
really good white balance isn't always a good thing. In this next shot, I tried to recreate what it might look like if I was in a dimly lit wine bar. Both phones did an excellent job at capturing the scene, but the Pixel 3a has night sight, and that dramatically changes the conversation when shooting people. I shot this next series using a tripod and self-timer. And you can see that with the magic of night mode on the Pixel 3a, you can get excellent photos that one would actually want to post on social media. This is the iPhone SE's weak spot. Apple wasn't able to implement night mode, which it was able to deliver on the iPhone 11 series. Speaking of night sight, it also works using the Pixel 3a's selfie camera, as can be seen in this example. The results are no less short of impressive. During the day, selfies were a toss up though. I like that the Pixel 3a selfie camera is wider, except when you switch to portrait mode, it then crops in. Meanwhile, I like how the iPhone SE does a better job at lighting my face. Either way, both are great. So for selfies, it's really night sight on the Pixel that gives it the edge. One last area that I wanna talk about is zoom. Both phones only offer digital zoom up to 5X on the iPhone SE and 7x on the Pixel 3a. Google's excellent use of computational photography again gives it the edge here. Their marketing term for it is Super Res Zoom, using multiple shots to bring in more detail into zoomed in photos. For this test, I took out some liquor bottles and created this scene. Then I zoomed into 5x on both phones. If you look at the text on the Quantro bottle, a margarita ingredient by the way, in case you're wondering, it's much more legible on the Pixel 3a's photo. Even if you zoom in to 7x, which normally you don't want to do when you're using digital zoom. I have one more zoom sample. This one shot at 5x of the Manhattan skyline during sunset. The extra detail gives the photo more punch. I also love the richer colors on the Pixel shot too. So how do we score this round? Overall, when it comes to more photos, the iPhone SE takes much better photos than the Pixel SE. But there are times when computational photography, that's a Google specialty, gives the Pixel 3a an advantage. Using night sight to photograph people at night and when using digital zoom. I'm gonna rustle some feathers here and give this one to the iPhone, but give it two points for winning this mega round. And the Pixel, one point because it does night and zoom shots better. Round six, extras, or shall we call it freebies. After a fiercely fought head to head, what extras do you get if you pick one phone over the other. For $399, one shouldn't expect much, but that's where you'd be wrong. In terms of essentials, or at the very least what's expected from a flagship in 2020, the iPhone SE has an IP67 water and dust resistance rating. The Pixel 3a does not. More of a novelty in 2020, and now a rare feature some like to talk about, the Pixel comes with a headphone jack, long abandoned by Apple and many other manufacturers. I personally would prefer water resistance over a headphone jack, but really this round boils down to what you need your phone for and how you plan on using it. So having said that, I'll leave this round a draw. After six rounds, the iPhone has six points to the Pixel's four. Of course, this arbitrary point system is more for fun and the categories are based on what matters more to me. Now, I don't like doing a head-to-head -head video if I can't declare a winner. So I'll take a stand and name the iPhone SE the winner of this head-to-head. -head. But at the end of the day, you need to decide which one of these two phones is your gadget match. And I have a feeling that answer will depend on what you prefer iOS or Android. Perhaps the more important point to be made is that these are not $1,000 phones. They're $400 phones, and that's just fine. In fact, no, that's not fine. That's great. We need more competitors to these phones in the market today. And if you're in the market for a budget phone, an affordable phone that works well and performs great, these two are definitely the ones to consider. One last thing, if you're inclined to pick the Pixel over the iPhone, that's okay, but I recommend that you wait a little for Google's impending 4A 
announcement that might happen anytime soon. Fingers crossed they keep the same price. All right, I hope I was able to help with some of your buying decisions. After all, that's why this channel is called Gadget Lab. If you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. And while you're at it, also click that notification bell so that you get notified every time and as soon as we post a new video. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make GadgetMatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.